Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Adam Bonington and I am a gender affirming surgeon in San Francisco, California. One of the things we talk to our trans masculine patients about prior to surgery to remove their internal reproductive organs, and here I'm talking primarily about a hysterectomy to remove cervix, uterus, and fallopian tubes, is whether or not they also want to remove one or both of their ovaries at the time of surgery. There are several reasons why a patient might decide they do or do not want to remove their ovaries, and I thought it might be helpful to go through some of those considerations when making that decision. Overall, we know that for cisgender women who haven't yet gone through menopause, estrogen from the ovaries protects against things like cardiovascular disease and osteoporosis. For our transmasculine patients who take testosterone, estrogen kind of takes a back seat and the testosterone provides those protections. If we remove both of the patient's ovaries and for some reason they aren't on testosterone in the future, maybe because they lost insurance and they can't afford it, or their ideas about their gender identity shift and it's no longer part of their affirmation journey, then the patient would go through menopause and could start to experience hot flashes and mood changes and also be at risk for the things I previously mentioned. In terms of the surgery itself, removing ovaries while doing a hysterectomy only adds about 10 minutes or so to the operating time. It does perhaps make the surgery more risky because there are major blood vessels that flow to the ovaries which could bleed. And the ureters, which carry urine from the kidneys to the bladder, are located close to where the ovaries are removed and have the risk of being injured. These are really rare complications. There's also a 3 to 4% chance that a little piece of ovary might be left behind during the surgery. Patients also ask about the problems that the ovaries can cause later on if they aren't removed. The risk of things like ovarian cysts or bleeding cysts or twisted ovaries can all be surgical emergencies, but the chance of those is pretty low. Overall, there is a less than 10% risk that if you leave the ovaries, you will need to have surgery in the future for some sort of ovary problem. I do always tell patients that if in the future they ever experience new or different abdominal pain or pelvic pain, it's important to make sure that their doctor knows which internal organs they still have so they can order the right tests and help make the right diagnosis. Another consideration is the risk of ovarian cancer. For average healthy people, the lifetime risk of ovarian cancer is about 1.4%. Removing both ovaries brings that risk down pretty much close to zero, but we don't know how the risk changes if only one ovary is removed. For patients who have had relatives with ovarian or fallopian tube cancer, we recommend they talk with their primary care doctor and consider possible genetic testing. And of course, another consideration is fertility. We need more research and data on the success rates for things like egg retrieval for people who have been on T. But if both ovaries are removed, then we will no longer have the option to try those things in the future. So obviously, there are a lot of different things to consider when trying to decide whether or not to remove one or both ovaries at the time of surgery to remove other internal organs. In addition to talking with the surgeon, I also always recommend that patients have a conversation with their primary care doctors or hormone specialists about this topic for additional perspectives and guidance. Let us know in the comments if you have other questions and feel free to reach out to our clinic if you'd like to make an appointment.